Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Wineberry Ridge Retreat. Today I'm going to be talking about a couple of my favorite wildflowers. If you're a wildflower connoisseur, I'm willing to bet that at least one of these is among your favorites as well. So the two wildflowers I'll be discussing in today's video are both native perennials found in southwest Virginia. They are the common milkweed and the butterfly milkweed, or as probably known by most people, just plain butterfly weed. Almost anyone who keeps a favorite list of wildflowers are probably going to include the butterfly weed among their top 10 favorites, simply because it's a tremendously showy plant. I'll have some photos coming up later in the video. And it's just spectacular when it's in bloom. It's also such a contrast to everything else on the landscape. As implied by their name, both of these plants belong to the milkweed family which numbers probably several dozen different species across the United States. So why is a milkweed plant called a milkweed? It's because the sap looks so similar to milk. It's fairly sticky, but if you break or crush any part of the plant, you'll normally see the sap start flowing. I'm going to break a leaf off uh, just to illustrate that point. So milkweeds have a long history of being utilized for a variety of medicinal purposes. This seems somewhat contradictory to me given the fact that the sap is toxic if consumed or ingested. So milkweeds are tremendously important to a variety of pollinators. Most notable of these is the monarch butterfly whose entire reproductive cycle is wholly dependent upon milkweeds. The adult butterfly lays its eggs on a milkweed plant. Uh, the larva then feeds on the milkweed plant, consumes the toxic sap, and therefore is distasteful and possibly even toxic to most of its predators. Although both of these plants belong to the milkweed family, there are some definite differences between the two. As I already indicated, the butterfly weed has a bright orange, uh, showy uh, cluster of flowers, very obvious from a distance, uh, quite contradictory to the common milkweed. Not that the flowers aren't pretty, but they're, they're not showy at all. Uh, generally, they range from a white to pink or purplish color. Some other differences between the two are, first of all, the size. Uh, this patch of common milkweed, uh, some of these are at least six feet tall because that's my height, so I use that as a gauge. Uh, most times, the butterfly weed may be a couple of feet tall, so it's quite smaller than the uh, common milkweed is. So another difference between the two plants is the sap. The common milkweed contains the white sticky sap that... Uh, that I showed previously uh, on the short clip that I had, which is common to most plants in the milkweed family. The butterfly weed does not have the white sap. It actually has a clear sap, more uh, closely related or resembling a, a resin of some type. Another difference in the two plants is the fragrance. Common milkweeds are overwhelming. Uh, you can smell them several feet away. Uh, and I think that actually makes a difference in the number of pollinators that they attract because typically I see far more pollinators on the common milkweed and you've probably been able to see some of those things swarming around me here as I've stood in this patch versus the butterfly weed. I can't detect when I've tried to smell it 
any kind of fragrance from the butterfly weed. So that's a major difference. I love working here on the property when the milkweed is in flower because uh, I have it basically in all the open spots and it's just a fragrance that hangs on the air. Yep. So do deer eat milkweed? Well, my initial thought was probably not, but there, as you can see here, this is one of the butterfly weeds. Um, probably a dozen that are very similar to this in this general area that they basically just nip the uh, the bloom off the top and then they don't seem to touch the rest of the plant. So common milkweed may vary uh, in several regards. Uh, certainly it varies in the color of its flowers, the cluster of flowers it had. The patch here behind me, uh, it sits, stands alone, so to speak. This is actually in a clover plot that I've mowed around to, to keep from mowing these down. But they're just an off-white creamy color. I've got a different patch, probably 20 feet away, uh, that I'll show you the color of and, and show you the difference in the color. But not only that, this patch is probably six feet in height. Uh, so this patch is obviously much shorter than the other patch I was standing in front of. Uh, just kind of guessing by my height, I would guess this, uh, these plants are probably four to four and a half feet tall for the tallest ones, and, and a lot of those are much, much shorter. So literally, a small patch of milkweed, such as I've got surrounding me, is a miniature ecosystem unto itself. The fragrance attracts uh, numerous pollinators. You could actually probably take an individual plant and give an entomology quiz uh, based on the different uh, types of insects that will come in and utilize the plant. Uh, a little research on the internet, if you can believe what you see there, there are approximately 450 different kinds of insects that use the uh, common milkweed in some shape, fashion, or form. It may be simply for the nectar on the flowers, others may consume the leaves and various parts of the plants. And I've actually noticed uh, insects that are hunters, so to speak, actually using these to hunt uh, other insects that they feed upon.
So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I had a, a lot of fun putting it together. It gave me an opportunity to do some macro photography, which I really enjoy. But uh, it brings a different dimension to the video uh, for sure. Take care, and we'll see you next time.